Okay, so it's been a long day, and I, I'm going to try to present my, uh, my talk in a, in a different way. So, because we are in Paris, I thought, let's talk about a love story. So this is, this is a love affair site, Angular 2 with GraphQL. Oh, so let's, let's, let me introduce myself first. So I'm a Google developer expert, uh, international speaker, <coughs> Angular 2 trainer. You can, uh, maybe you can recognize some, uh, some people in, the, in this picture. We have uh, Todd Moto. He was supposed to be my assistant during this training, but he was all, all time on Twitter. Very nice guy. And um, I'm also a community leader. So this is, um, uh, this, this is my community uh, back in London. This is Angular Zone, and we organize meetups every two months, uh, the same you do here in Paris uh, with Angular Paris. And um, we do webinars, we do a lot of content that we put online, so you can, uh, you can check it out. And finally, this is a small, uh, this is a small project, which is a fun project, is the first Angular conference happening in a cruise. So, <laughs> so this, is, uh, this is going to happen next year in May. There will be Angular content, but there will be a lot of uh, other activities that you can enjoy, <laughs> of course. And um, yeah, I think that's all. This is a little, a little intro to warm up. So yeah, I want to talk about uh, GraphQL. So GraphQL, yeah, love. Sparkles, um, butterflies. Okay, so what is, what is GraphQL? A lot of people just doesn't know what it is, so I'm going to try to introduce it. So GraphQL was developed by Facebook uh, a few years ago, that was uh, 2012, and mainly it was to support uh, mobile uh, native teams that they were uh, moving from HTML5 to uh, native apps. And uh, the main issue is that they had to develop at high um, speed, and they were having some issues with the interfaces and the REST API. So they built GraphQL, and it was so good for them that they decided to open source it some years later. So this is uh, 2015 now, it's open source, and uh, they decided to open the specification so other people in the community could implement their own versions. So the first version was a JavaScript uh, version, but nowadays there are other uh, implementations that you can use. Uh, some of them are using uh, languages like Scala or PHP, Python, and probably you will find the platform that you, that you need if you want to. So this is, this is the this is a diagram showing uh, the interaction. So this is a GraphQL server that um, we are going to use, and we will interact with it uh, through two separate uh, APIs. So these APIs, one is a query, and this is to um, retrieve information, to fetch information from a GraphQL server, and the other one will be uh, using mutations. So these are a slightly different wording for uh, these operations that we, uh, that we all know. And there's nothing, there's nothing more to it. So let's, uh, let me show you a simple uh, query and uh, what are the properties, the main properties that we can, uh, that we can see from it. So you can see a simple query on the left side and I'm querying a type that is a user and I'm uh, using uh, some uh, arguments. I'm, I'm filtering this um, um, collection, and I want to retrieve this uh, field, which is uh, the Twitter handler. So it looks pretty much like a JavaScript object. If we look at the result from this query, from executing this query, we will see that it follows the same structure. So if you are building a client using GraphQL, you can, um, predict will, what will be the structure of the results, which is uh, really uh, convenient. And then you can choose exactly the fields that you want. So there won't be any overhead on communications. 
So these are some, uh, some basic properties of um, GraphQL. If we see um, comparison between REST and GraphQL, uh, this could be a, a nice diagram to show it. So we have on REST, we have uh, dif different endpoints, and then we, have, um, we can uh, query different uh, data sources. This is probably not the common uh, case, but this, this is just to show um, the possibilities. But if we move this to a GraphQL, we will have just one endpoint, and we will have all these um, different queries implemented in this layer. So GraphQL can also be seen as an integrator. And then you can also notice that we have uh, changed from this, uh, you know, um, complex querying between the different data sources, so we just query each one. So we're separating these uh, different calls. So it's adding some more um, structure into the back end, which is nice. So I also want to introduce Apollo client, and this is the client to uh, query and uh, mutate uh, GraphQL uh, data source. And yes, nice. So we have, <laughs> we have this uh, heart beating. Um, on the client, we have now Angular 2 and uh, Apollo client. And then on the server, we have GraphQL. And uh, we are going to use probably the, the full implementation using uh, Express uh, and Node. So this is more or less the architecture that uh, you're going to, to see. And as an overview of a Apollo client, uh, it will analyze and execute our queries. So it will, um, it will see if it can merge some of the queries. It, it will do some smart stuff so we don't uh, query uh, the backend um, more times than uh, required. And then also it will do some uh, catching of the queries and also the resolves so it can get the most out of it. So these are all nice uh, properties. Um, there's also maybe a note that it's using Redux. I don't know uh, how many of you are using Redux, but it's, uh, it's being uh, quite uh, everywhere. So it's also implemented in um, Apollo client. And you can also have access to it and implement your own uh, reducers, which is nice. So what are the dependencies? I'm going to dig a little bit more deeper so you can uh, get um, familiar with the dependencies. The first dependency will be a Apollo client, and this is just a JavaScript implementation for this client. We have uh, other options, so if you are building uh, your app in uh, other platforms like React or, for example, um, other, other um, front-end frameworks, you also have a client for them. And we, we have for Angular 2 a specific uh, dependency that will uh, give us the nice APIs with uh, promises, observables, that will make this easier for Angular 2 developers. And we obviously will have access to these uh, GraphQL APIs. Then maybe there's only one node, which is the GraphQL tag, and this is a static parsing of the um, GraphQL queries. And this will uh, allow us to have this uh, nice preview, so when we are actually writing our queries, we will see the schema and the documentation on, a, on our IDE, which is really cool. Similar to what we uh, have today with TypeScript. And um, finally, I'd like to, to encourage to use um, the tool, the default tool for GraphQL, which is Graphical. And there's this nice website, it's called GraphQL Hub, which gives you access to Twitter and GitHub uh, public APIs, and you can uh, just query it and explore it, as you can see in this uh, animation. So you can, for example, if you want to get um, the Twitter followers, you can just explore the GraphQL API. You can see some browsing there, and just find the properties, the fields that you want to, uh, to query. So you, you can go back to the query, add these, and we'll come back to the results. Big fan. So what what is the people using GraphQL today? So obviously we have Facebook, um, GitHub, Pinterest, uh, Shopify, and Coursera. So it's uh, uh, getting adoption, more adoption. So is it true love? So this is the question. Is it true love? 
Well, only time will tell. We'll see. We'll see what happens there. Things to love about GraphQL. It's declarative, decoupled from um, storage, which is uh, nice. We can build our clients uh, independently. It's validated and structured, and the main thing is the GraphQL schema. Facilitates collaboration. If you are working in big teams, large teams, like they do in Facebook, that will help you. And the last thing I want to say is that it's super fast. So it can do a lot, it can do multiple queries, just make one request and get all the data you need. Well, that's all I got, so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.